This is the story of the most expensive global misinformation campaign ever mounted. Journalists, foreign governments, US scientists and even school kids were fed a story to distract the world from the biggest Cold War spy mission ever attempted. This is the story of K-129, a Soviet ballistic missile submarine raised by the Howard Hughes Corporation ship Glomar Explorer. Science Screen Report is provided to the schools of Baltimore by Martin Marietta Corporation. This film was made by the CIA and shown in the Baltimore School District. The Sea, a new reserve of global resources, including metals from deep sea nodules, potato sized objects covering thousands of square miles of sea bottom. It claimed the seabed was littered with valuable manganese nodules. This is a deep sea nodule, a potato sized lump holding over 30 metallic oxides. Millions of tons of such nodules lie scattered on the deep ocean floor. This project's surface platform ship is the Glomar Explorer, notable for a complete onboard internal dry dock, which now holds the advanced design robot miner, ready for testing. A new ship was being built 80 miles down the road at Chester Shipyards to supposedly mine the seabed. Baltimore has a fine history of shipbuilding and was obviously chosen to test this misinformation in a plan to convince the public there was an amazing resource in seabed mining. Its nodule collector, tested on a simulated seafloor embedded with nodules, crushes them into gravel. Manganese nodules do not exist in the numbers claimed by this film. An airlift system. The technology demonstrated here was mocked up by the CIA. Which is then pumped to the surface as simulated here. The researchers were paid actors. And the manganese nodules are film props. I remember being intrigued by deep sea mining as a teenager while living in the UK. The London Times newspaper ran glossy illustrated articles about the manganese nodule resource that was about to be mined on the Pacific seabed. The CIA spent millions on this global misinformation. We can now reveal why. Early in January 1968, the Soviet ballistic submarine K-129 is conducting nuclear submarine patrols in the Pacific, north of the Hawaiian Islands. After days hidden at sea, on February the 24th, she surfaced. Made radio contact with Kamchatka Navy Base on the eastern seaboard of the Soviet Union. The officer in charge, Rear Admiral Rudolf Golosov reported all was well. They were about to carry out a deep sea dive test and continue patrolling. K-129 was never heard from again. By March, the Soviets were so concerned, they chose to contact the commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet, 
in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The Soviets knew the US Navy had an undersea sonar array called SOSAS that might have picked up the sound of their submarine sinking in the deep ocean. The US Sonar HQ in California had recorded an anomalous sound on March the 8th and informed the Soviets that they had a signal. The US did not reveal the triangulation position of the sound. They told the Soviet Navy that they could not pinpoint their missing submarine. The Soviet Union sadly announced the possible loss of K-129 and a crew of 87 souls. Clandestine Cold War operations were no doubt resumed with other submarines. The US Navy had triangulated an undersea explosion at 40 degrees north and 180 degrees east. This puts the submarine's last position in an extremely remote and deep part of the Pacific Ocean, halfway between Hawaii and Midway Island. A University of Hawaii oceanographic research ship was carrying out water quality tests in this area. They were amazed to discover a radioactive slick on the surface of the Pacific Ocean. K129 had been found, five miles down and in one piece. The submarine was calculated to weigh 8,000 tons. On board were three nuclear-tipped missiles, nuclear and conventional torpedoes, launch codes and the Soviet coordinates for Western targets. This would be the prize of the century for the US. At the time, there was no technology capable of raising the sunken submarine. For four years, the conundrum continued. Sunken treasure on the seabed, and no way of getting it. Enter the maverick industrialist, Howard Hughes. His family had made a fortune in the oil drilling industry and had assisted the CIA in early spy satellite technology. The Hughes Corporation claimed that they could design and build a new type of ship, capable of holding an accurate position at sea and fitted with a crane in a hidden moon pool, capable of lifting 8,000 tons from a depth of five miles. The US government and the CIA bought into the project and gave the funding and permission for Howard Hughes to begin construction of his sub-raising craft in a shipyard on the east coast of the USA. To try and keep the project secret, the CIA constructed an elaborate story that Howard Hughes was building a deep sea mining vessel that could raise enough precious metals to keep our planet stocked for generations. I'm now aboard what is probably the most technologically advanced seagoing vessel in the world today, the Glomar Explorer. Imagine if we could part the seas and look into the hidden world that covers three quarters of the Earth's surface. The deepest ocean floor resembles a vast wasteland as barren as the Sahara Desert. Today we realize that this wasteland can no longer be wasted, and the technological abilities built into this ship can open the sea to us like a new frontier. The deception was spread globally. Governments, broadcasters and scientists were fed a pack of lies to protect a secret plan to raise the K-129 and recover her nuclear secrets. The CIA project to raise the Soviet submarine was given the codename Azorian. 
Glomar Explorer with a crew of 160 was launched on the 4th of November 1972 at a cost of over $350 million. And she started sea trials. The size and radical design of the Glomar Explorer cannot be overstated. With its James Bond style moon pool, giant doors on the bottom of the ship could be opened and a large compartment flooded. Inside was a jig over a hundred feet long with six specialized steel retractable clamps. The ship had over five miles of Hughes drilling pipes to form a lifting cable. Accurate inertial guidance navigation equipment meant the ship could stay over the lift zone. The automatic station keeping system will now lock the ship's position in preparation for the undocking of the seafloor machinery. Remote TV cameras and the helicopter deck made the Glomar Explorer one of the most innovative ships of its time. The CIA deception plan that the Glomar Explorer was a deep sea mining ship had not worked. Soviet spy ships were in the area monitoring the whole operation. On the morning of June the 20th, everything was proceeding smoothly. The grappling hooks latched on to the Soviet submarine. But possibly due to the extra weight of water inside and the suction caused by the craft settling into the mud, the total weight was now over 10,000 tons. The crane's design specifications were exceeded, but lifting began. The grappling hooks were locked onto the Soviet submarine. One mile up from the seabed and with four miles still to go, grappling hooks started failing. Probably caused by the intense cold of the deep ocean, the specialist steel hooks fractured. The submarine broke into two pieces and the largest returned to the seabed. The crane finished its lifting and reports claim that K129's torpedo compartment was recovered. Inside were six dead Soviet crew members and two nuclear-tipped torpedoes. Sadly, the dead Soviet sailors' bodies were radioactive. This recently declassified film shows the sailors being given a full military funeral and placed into a red metal coffin for their return trip to the seabed and to their comrades. No nuclear code books, targeting information or atomic missiles were recovered. This would seem to be the end of the story. A seven billion dollar failed mission that did not recover any Soviet secrets. But recent information reveals the US had lost a hunter attack submarine at the same time. And in the same area of the Pacific. The USS Scorpion's mission was to hunt and attack Soviet nuclear submarines. There is a distinct possibility that a collision occurred when both submarines sank. 
Project Azorian might well have been a combined mission to raise and rescue both the crippled submarines. In an interview, before he mysteriously died in a boating accident, former CIA director William Colby said that Project Azorian was a major accomplishment for the US. Why he praised this failed mission raises the possibility that it was more successful than revealed, and Soviet nuclear secrets were recovered. The $350 million Glomar Explorer was scrapped in China in June 2015. We may never know all the fascinating details of this part of Cold War history, but remember, the truth is out there.